Small loans can make a big difference. I'm Jill Horner. This is Comcast Local Edition. With me this hour is Janet Kovesh. She's director of the Division of Women for the New Jersey Department of Community Affairs. Thanks for being with us, Janice. Thank you for having me. Talk to us a little bit about this micro loan program. The idea is to empower women, help them start their own businesses, but we're not talking about a huge amount of money. No, we're talking about small loans. The maximum amount is $5,000. And in addition to the loan, it's not just giving them the money to get their business started, but it's giving them the, the training that they need. So, you know, how do you uh, write a business plan? How do you write a marketing plan? How do you run a business once you've established this idea? And it's a, um, it's a partnership throughout. So it's not just the classes and then the money, but then the mentoring that goes on afterwards to help them continue to grow the business. Since we know that usually it's in that first few years that businesses either succeed or fail. Many people have heard of microloan programs in Africa, India. Why bring this concept here to the United States, to New Jersey, and why specifically target women? Women are the um, are a growing population of individuals who are looking to start their own business. Obviously, with the economy the way it is, women are now going back out into the workforce. And those that may not have skills to succeed in a corporate world have something that, that's unique to them. And the microloan is specific because it targets women who are unemployed or underemployed and gives them an opportunity. It builds a community relationship. So they go through classes with other women who are experiencing the same thing and they work together. They build off those relationships and support one another. In the long term to the help long. make their businesses successful as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. This program has been in place for just a few years now, but what kind of success are you starting to see and what kind of businesses are we actually talking about? We're, we're some very unique businesses. Um, it, it's been exciting to see women think outside the box and, and do something that's different. We had one woman who bought her own tow truck. Um, and does towing. We have others who go to garage sales and, and purchase um, used handbags to then refurbish, sell on eBay. So it's not the traditional daycare or house cleaning, but women who are thinking kind of outside. Um, we have estheticians who are now working. We have medical billing companies. So we've seen some success. We've probably had a, over 100 women go through the programs throughout all of our groups and started maybe 15, 20 businesses. You're specifically targeting female veterans right now, as yes. we've seen so many women and men return from Iraq and Afghanistan. What are some of the challenges that these women face returning to the workplace after serving their country? It, it's They've been gone for a year or more. Um, you know, obviously the economy has gone through such turmoil in that time frame. So while they're over there serving, they may or may not have jobs to come back to. Um, and in addition to them not having their jobs, there are how many other people out there looking for jobs as well. Women have a unique ability to kind of refocus themselves and recreate themselves. So this is a great opportunity for those veterans who are coming back who had ideas to start something and we're going to give them the resource. So we're offering a discounted loan rate for them. Um, it's a great opportunity. I know SBA has been part of it as well as NJABA, which is New Jersey Association of Women Business Owners. And it's going to help them um, you know, kind of reacclimate themselves to what's going on. And I think it's going to be an exciting opportunity. And these are low interest loans? Yes. The normal rate for our micro business loan is 3%. For the women veterans, we'll be offering a half a percent, half a percent interest rate. Okay. So when we talk about the success of this program, you told me that a big part of it comes from the networking opportunities, from the training. Do you do follow-ups as well when it comes to these businesses, almost like a mentoring program? Absolutely. Um, once they get their loan, it's not just you're out the door, but there are professionals that go out and meet with them in a one-on-one. -on -one. Some of the groups get back together and have reunions and or, or kind of created their own support group. So these are the things that I'm facing. What are you facing? How can we help one another? So we see a, a real community. And women do that. Women ha create their own communities. They're all about relationship building, and that's what makes us successful. We just have a short time left, but for women who are watching, they may have a great idea. How do they get involved with this program? They can reach out to us through our website, which is um, nj.gov forward slash dca forward slash dow, or they can call us. Um, if you go to our website, it's got all the information for the contacts, or if you reach out to us, we'll help however we can. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. We've been talking with Janice Kovacs, Director of the Division on Women for the Department of Community Affairs. I'm Jill Horner for Comcast Local Edition.
Female ex-offenders can face additional hurdles when they leave the prison system. I'm Jill Horner. This is Comcast Local Edition. With me this hour is Janice Kovacs, Director of the Division on Women for the Department of Community Affairs. Thanks so much for being with us, Janice. Thank you. What are some of those hurdles that women face that may be more difficult to overcome when they leave the prison system? A lot of time those women are the sole responsibility and the sole breadwinner for the family. So they may have children that have been dispersed through either the foster system or to other family members. So it's getting the children back. It's many times they didn't have a role model growing up. So they had their children, but they didn't learn life skills. The ability to have a place to go and, and learn the basics of parenting, you know, what's involved to get job skills so that they can then go out and become much more productive. And getting basic paperwork done, getting a copy of birth certificate, getting a copy of a driver's license, all that, you know, dealing with some of the bureaucracy sometimes can be overwhelming. And when they've come out of a system where everything was taken care of for them, to have one place where they can go where someone is helping them through all of those transitions is, is what this is all about. How has the Department of Community Affairs worked to have that one location where women can gain these skills and work to navigate the system so that they can be successful once leaving the prison system? The um, Division on Women Funds program is called the Urban Women's Job Training Centers. And we're located in Newark, Camden, and Trenton. And what they are are programs that work with women who are underprivileged, who may be on public assistance already. And it was a great relationship because we knew that we had some of those ex-offenders coming in. So through a meeting with the State Parole Board, we came to an agreement that you know we were going to help focus on some of that for them. Um, these programs offer the job training. They offer the life skills classes already. So it was a perfect, like I said, a perfect relationship to build. What are some of these classes? What do women actually gain by participating in a program like this? They learn about basic parenting. You know, what is it? They learn about some health care, you know, for their children. Some of them get prenatal care or postnatal care um, if they've just had children. They get basics on how to manage a budget, you know, household budget where we take for granted sometimes. Some of these women have never been had to manage a budget or been able to. So it's how do you make, whether it's your food stamps or your money, last so that you can feed your children. What are some of the resources that you can use? So between food pantries and other organizations, it's making sure that they have a, a safety net and a network that they can utilize to help improve their, their chances of not going back to prison. What kind of difference can a program make not just for these women, but for their kids as well. It's a phenomenal experience because now these children are seeing a parent and they're, they're actually getting a parent, not just someone who's been a part of their lives on and off. So they have someone who can be a role model to them. The, the children get to see how their parents, how their mothers are, are growing as individuals and the challenges that they face. And I think it helps them understand that, you know, if I stay on this path, then I could be, you know, I could either go to prison or if I follow the way my parent is going or my mother's going, you know, there's an opportunity for me to be successful and help others as well. What about the recidivism rate when it comes to women in this program? Does a program like this actually help to prevent women returning to prison? I believe it does. We've just started the program with the partnership, so we'll start to measure. Um, but we know that women are the fastest growing population in prisons in America right now. So the we really need to focus on what they need to get so that they're not going back. And I think we're going to see a, a huge success. We've seen that Governor Corzine's crime strategy, you know, and this really ties into a lot of what he's focusing on. We just have a short time left, Janice, but what is the importance with connecting with these urban women centers? It gives them a place to go. It's, um, like I said, it's a safety net. It's a place that will help them and doesn't judge them. You know, it gives them the feeling of self-confidence because many of these women don't have the self-confidence. They, they'd gone to prison because they had no other alternatives, but whether it was to steal food or to do drugs or, or to prostitute themselves in order to um, make money to, to raise their family. Now they're learning a skill set and they're getting the support that they need to, to move on. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. We've been talking with Janice Kovash, Director of the Division on Women for the Department of Community Affairs. I'm Jill Horner for Comcast Local Edition.